Hello! Today I'd like to show you how to make a foundation piece kimono block. So it's only a little block and it is foundation piece. So I've made one up here, it's actually in a little snap bag. I keep my camera in this bag. But uh, setting that aside, it's really just for the block. As you can see, it's quite little. It only measures two inches across by three inches high. So quite small pieces and quite fiddly little shapes, which is why I've done it as a foundation piece block. So if you're interested, there is a pattern to purchase and download from Gourmet Quilter. Um, it's a pattern for the block, not a pattern for the whole project that you might be going to make with it. Um, so in, in the pattern, there's a picture of, a, of one complete block and there's a couple of suggestions of ways you may want to use it if you choose to. Um, and it's also in the pattern will be six actual foundation blocks that you can make. So you can make six kimonos um, from there without too much trouble. So I just thought I'd show you how that's done. So the block is done. If you've done foundation piecing before, you'll know that sometimes we work in more than one segment. You can't keep adding pieces. So when you foundation piece, we're sewing onto the foundation, which in this case is going to be the paper. We work from the wrong side, so we need some sort of light source, like a light box, or I have a trusty little lamp that's going to show through. Um, so I'll go through the process of, of doing the foundation piecing on this block. And as I mentioned, there are two segments. So when we make the block, this is the this is the block, which looks a little strange at the moment because it hasn't had its seam allowance taken from the edge. So that's how it's going to look until it's sewn into something. But to do this top little collar bit with just this little point in it, there's a separate section here. So that's one section and then that's the other section and then they will get joined together once we've done the foundation onto the sections. So I'll go through all that and how we do that. So to, to do this, you need to cut away, cut around your block. So cut in between the dotted lines, not on the dotted line, that's a final cutting line for when we make the block and we've got everything together. So if it's a little bit bigger, it doesn't need to be a lot bigger, just a little bit bigger so that we can trim it to that dotted line would be really good. So I've already done that um, here with my with one block here that I'm going to show you. So I've got my two segments separated. There's a little bit of an extra bit of paper all the way around beyond the dotted line. So that would be ideal if you're going to do it that way. So as far as fabric goes, just to make one block, just very small amounts. It's obviously not very big, it's just a little block. Um, so I'm suggesting that you only need something like a five inch square of the background and the main, your kimono colour. Um, it actually takes even less than a five inch square, but I'm starting out with a five inch square just to give you an idea. And quite often we have five inch squares in our stash. So I'll go ahead and get started. So on your sewing machine, we're just going to be sewing um, I have got the quarter inch foot on, but just a regular sewing foot. And I also shorten the stitch on the um, sewing machine so that it's a little bit shorter than normal because that helps perforate the paper more so that it'll tear away later because we don't leave the paper in, we take it out. So to get started, all the pieces in, uh, are numbered. You put them on in number order. So we've got an A1 and an A2, etc. And we can see that the A1 is going to be a background because this is going to be part of the kimono, these two little long triangles here. So we need a background piece and we need a piece of the kimono fabric. So again, because pieces are small, I'd suggest that we probably just need to cut off from our squares, say a one inch strip is enough to get some of those little side bits done. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to position this. I've got my little trusty lamp here. Um, and uh, having an iron handy is a good thing because it's quite good to press as you go with this sort of thing. So on my trusty lamp here, I'm going to place my... So we're working back to front. So we want the right side of the fabric facing away from the paper. So wrong sides together, basically, for the first piece, at least. Um, but because we're going to be sewing these two together, I'm actually going to put these two right sides together and then position them together behind the paper. Now you could pin them or something if you felt that you needed to hold them in place. I'm actually just going to hold hold them. So you want the background against the paper and the kimono fabric right sides and away from the paper there. So we just want to we're going to be sewing along this seam line here between one and two. So I want to be able to see that I've got about a quarter of an inch or slightly less on something this small amount. Can you see that that's showing? So we're going to be sewing along that line and we're going to be flipping the red one back over the A2. So we want to sew there with just a quarter inch into there. So I'll just go to the sewing machine now and do that. 
Oops. And so we're stitching on the line. We've got a slightly shorter than normal stitch length. Start about a quarter of an inch in, above the, the uh, drawn line, so into the next sec section of the kimono. come all the way out there and it's it's as simple as that for the first bit so this block doesn't actually take all that long and because it's unusual shapes uh, we can actually get rid of this extra fabric here we'll be using that for another part of it in a minute and now I'm just going to go to the iron and press that open because we had already allowed for it only to be a quarter inch or slightly less seam allowance we don't need to trim anything off there so I'm just going to press that now so that that sits nice and flat. And now the next piece that we want to put on is number three, which is just this little tiny corner down the bottom, which just gives us that little angle. So again, it's in the background fabric. And so this little piece that we've cut off here will work fine for that. This will possibly be harder to see through because I've got that red fabric to see through. Um, but I'm sure that with whatever you're using for a light source, you'll be able to manage this. So, same thing, because we're going, we want the right side of the um, background fabric facing towards us, because we're going to be sewing along this little line here, and it's going to be flipping down. So you just want to be having quarter of an inch uh, beyond this line facing away from that last piece of fabric that we sewed on. So we'll just do that. Oops. Let's King's go. So now I'm just going to stitch along that little line and start right out at the seam allowance area and come right the way across. Okay, so now we've got some some fabric here that we don't really need. So what I like to do is is just tear the paper along that perforated where we've stitched it, fold it back along that stitching line that we've just done. And then I like to just trim away all that excess that we don't need there. And then I can go back to the iron again and flip that over and press that in place. So it doesn't matter that the fabric's sticking out beyond the pattern at the moment because we will be trimming that down afterwards. So looking a little strange at the moment, but we're on our way. So now we need to put in this slightly larger piece, this A4 piece. So that's from this um, nice red fabric. Now we've got a couple of larger pieces, this one up here and this one here are both similar sizing. So um, we need a little bit more than an inch because that finishes at about an inch wide. So we want at least an inch and a half or so of the fabric. So if we just do that slightly more than an inch and a half, and then we can cut that in half because we're working with a five inch square. You just need that um, two and a half inch bit. And now I'm going to position that and sew that on. And I think you're getting the hang of this now. So again, right side facing up against the right side of this. And we're wanting to stitch along this line here between the We've done two, we've done one, two, and three, and now we're going to put on piece four. So just that quarter inch into that next piece that we're sewing. Make sure that it comes down far enough to, to be down here and also just covering this line up here. We just want about a quarter of an inch. Can you see it's a little bit darker? Just that quarter, the darker bit is the seam allowance that we're going to sew. So we're going to sew along this line. We want the seam going into it that way. So we'll come back and sew that line. Again, just extending a little bit beyond that, that line there for the top part of the kimono. And same thing, we're going to now um, peel back this so we've actually stitched right the way down here, but we're just going to to just tear that away from the stitching. It doesn't matter too much, we will be taking all that paper out. So we're going to fold the paper back over on that line that we've just sewn, and we're going to trim away this extra here. And then we're going to go back to the trusty iron.
And so that's sitting over nicely now, and it well and truly covers, um, we can see if we look through here, the next seam line, in, in fact it's just a touch too big, which is good because we can trim it down when we've sewn the next pieces on. So next I'm going to sew piece um, 5 on, which is again we've got a, a piece here that is going to fit, so I'm going to position that like that. And now I don't think you need to watch me do every little step of the way now, you've got the hang of this. We're going to put piece 5 on, and we're going to put piece 6 and piece 7 on in exactly the same way, stitching it, flipping the paper back, trimming away any excess, flipping it over and pressing it, and then the same thing with the next pieces. So we'll just work through and then I'll come and show you how to do that top piece as well. So I've sewn those last side bits on, the same as I did in the first place, and now we've got to do this little top section here. Just we had that piece left when we cut the bigger piece for the lower bit, we had a piece left which is big enough for this top bit. Have a quick look with the lamp, make sure we're sitting right. We're just going to sew across this line now. So again, right side of the kimono fabric up, and like that you can see that it's sitting beyond the sewn line there's some other little bits there from previous pieces as well but that's okay they'll get trimmed off shortly so we'll go and sew that line right the way across right from out the outside edge of the seam allowance as well just trim that as we've been doing just pull away any stitching so that the paper can fold down and bring this up and so we're putting the quarter inch line or something close to on that fold I forgot to mention that earlier but I think probably you probably know that and now I'm going to press that piece up and then we've finished that little segment we've still got the other top little segment to do so we'll just press this And it looks a little strange down the lower part, as you can see in this one here. And that's because when the seam is sewn across, when it's stitched into something, that will straighten that lower edge up to look as it should look. It just looks a little bit weird like this. So we can actually trim that piece up if we like now on that dotted line there. So your quarter inch in, if you've got a quarter inch mark on your ruler, should sit on the solid line and we should be cutting along the dotted line. So you can trim all four sides of that now. And then I'll just show you how to do the, the top little collar segment. So that's kind of cute now, but it does need that little peak at the top just up here. So that's in this segment here. So with my uh, fabrics again, um, I'm just going to cut we don't need very much, but I'm just going to cut another one inch strip of each. So there's not a huge amount left of those squares, but definitely something left. So this one here we can cut in half because we don't need it the full length and we don't need anything like the whole strip of that one. So on this one here, this is this is segment B, so we've got B1, B2 and B3. So B1 and B3 are backgrounds and the little triangle in the middle is the kimono fabric. So same thing, we put that wrong sides together. And this time, I will just cut that in half just because it's a bit big to be handling. So we need to, we've got this piece behind here. We want it to extend beyond where we're sewing. And this other piece that's going to be the little triangle, we want to put at right angles because we actually have to sew at an angle and we need that to flip down at an angle. If we put it at right angles at this stage, before we sew it, it will flip down at the angle we want it to flip down. So I'll go to the sewing machine and we'll sew that little short, so a new short line, but remember to stitch right out into the seam allowances so that everything holds nicely. Okay, same thing as we've been doing. We're going to fold the paper back, 
trim away that little corner that we don't need. That extra bulk in there. Go to the iron. And so that was because we put that at right angles, it's going to flip down now just at the angle that we want it to when we press it. And then we've got the other piece that we cut from the background fabric and we're going to do the same thing um, but this time we're going to have it this way coming down. We had the other one sticking to the top, this one to the bottom because when we flip that one when we've sewn it we want it to come around that way. So we're just going to pop that there so that we know that we're covered with a, a line of sewing. Go to the sewing machine. And again, pull away from the previous stitching up the top bit there. It doesn't really matter too much if it um, falls apart a little bit at this stage because, as I said, the paper will be coming out, but it's still helpful. Trim that off there, and then when we flip that back, that's going to be sitting just where we want it to. So that's that whole segment done now, and uh, we can just trim that again, line up your quarter inch inline on the solid line and cut along the dotted line. This is just a small piece so just be careful that things uh, don't move around too much when you're doing this. And this one and then we're going to sew these two segments together and then the block is done apart from of course anything like pulling papers out. So this was our main segment, this is our little collar segment. So all we're doing now is just a regular quarter inch seam, but because we've got the papers in, we're going to line it up and sew along that solid line as we've been doing. And then when I'm doing foundation piecing, I find it's easiest to press seams open. So we'll be stitching this and then pressing the seam open. So we've stitched that, we're going to press that open, so we'll just press it with the iron. And we can just press it from the right side. Everything's looking pretty good. And there's our little kimono block. We now have two of them. So when this is stitched in to something, like we've set this one here in with a little border on it, the border wasn't foundation piece, it's just a border sewn on top, and that straightens things out and makes everything sit as it should when it's stitched in. So I also, I haven't bound this yet, but I've uh, started making a little wall hanging here, um, a little bit like the one shown in the pattern, something like this one. Also another thought would be to make a nice long narrow one, uh, which would only be, as I said, quite, quite a narrow, like this sort of width maybe for a long narrow wall hanging. Sometimes we have a nice little corner that doesn't need a lot of um, things to hang something on. So when I put this one on here, if you can see this, around each block I've added from the same background fabric just a very narrow strip and it just sort of sets the kimono off because it gives it a little bit of space to sit so you can see what it is rather than hard up against another fabric. So when I've put this border around this one I've just cut the fabric three quarters of an inch so it's just a quarter of an inch of fabric showing that sets that off. When I made this one on the little bag here this is a little bit wider so I had cut this piece one inch so that you've got a half inch setting that one off and that isn't a different color but then it was going into something else so just a little thought that you could add that little extra border on so you, you get your block finished to this stage and then you can just cut yourself some narrow strips and uh, pop a border around that just to set it off nicely so that's the kimono foundation piece block as i mentioned the pattern for the block is available to purchase and download from gourmetcoulter.com and thank you very much